Hey, welcome to today's lesson. We're talking about writing equations, which is the first lesson in our next unit, which is unit E, equations and inequalities. Now, you're going to notice a lot of similarities in today's writing equations to the last video that we did, which was actually writing expressions. Um, the difference here is the word equations. An expression, remember, we talked about is just a mathematical sentence, whereas in a, as an equation is actually an expression with an equal sign. Uh, and so here we actually have that full math sentence that a lot of you are looking for um, on a regular basis. So again, we have the same chart that we had before. Just some keywords to look for so we know what operation we're working on. And when we're talking about addition, we'll oftentimes see the words plus, the sum, Increase by total, more than, or added to. If we're supposed to be subtracting, uh, we might see minus or the difference of, decreased by, fewer than, less than, subtracted from. When we're supposed to be multiplying, we'll see times, the product of, multiplied by, of, this is that key one that sneaks up on us a lot, twice. Uh, and division is often represented with words like divided by, the quotient of, separate into equal parts. These are just some keywords that often appear in our word problems that we need to get familiar with so we know how to decode them and turn them into our equations. So this is very similar to what we're doing, what we did before. We've got a verbal phrase and then we turn it into a number equation over here. So six increased by a number is 27. Here's this new part. When we say is, that's another word for equals. So 16 increased by a number equals 27. Therefore, we turn it into 16 plus y equals 27. Remember that we can use any variable that we want. If you chose to use n here in your head instead, that's totally fine. The difference, difference means subtraction of twice a number and three. So twice a number is multiplying. Here we have a difference. So we have two times a number minus three is equal to a negative four. It tells us right here equals negative four. So two y minus three equals a negative four. We've got the product, that's multiply, of one half and a number is 36. So one half times a number equals 36. A negative 3 is equal to, so here's the end of our sentence, they put it at the beginning, twice the sum of a number and 2. So the sum of a number and 2, that means a number plus 2, that whole answer times 2. So we have to put our parentheses in a number plus 2 times 2 is equal to a negative 3. Let's go ahead and see if we can figure some of these out here on our own. We're going to scoot down a little bit. And I'm going to uh, just make that smaller. Write the verbal phrase or sentence as a variable expression or equation. Let n represent the number. So 14 added to a number. Here we're just looking at an expression. There's no is anything. There's no equals anything. 14 added to a number. That means we have n plus 14. 22 less than half of a number. So if we're taking 22 away from half of a number, that means we have to have this half of a number first before we can take away the 22. Half of a number minus 22. Now we've got 42 divided by a number equals 17. I hope you notice that this is now an equation because we've got an equal sign in here. 42 divided by a number so I would write it as a fraction like that, equals 7. But you also could have put 42 divided by a number equals 7. Either one is fine. I just personally like that one. 5 minus twice a number is 17. Well, we know it is 17, so we can put that in there. Now we're done with that. 5 minus twice a number. So that means I'm having 5 and I'm taking away from it twice a number, 2n. 5 minus 2n equals 17. Good job. 
All right, so we got a little word problem. We're exploring a cave in which rock formations called stalagmites grow from the cave floor. The tour guide tells you that the tallest stalagmite in the cave is underwater in a pool that is 55 feet deep, and the distance between the tip of the stalagmite and the surface of the water is 14 feet. How tall is this stalagmite? Uh, as with any word problem, if it helps you to draw out a picture, do it. I think that helps incredibly here. We've got the floor, and these are our stalagmites. We know that the pool happens to be 55 feet deep. From the tip of the tallest stalagmite to the surface is 41 feet. So we're trying to figure out what this is. So if we put it into words, we'd say the height of the stalagmite, so this, plus the distance between the stalagmite and the surface equals the total depth of the water. So this plus this equals this. So when we write a, using our verbal model to create our, our equation, we would say h, because we don't know how tall that stalagmite is, plus 41 feet equals 55. So this unknown, our h, plus 41 equals 55. So if we go down a little bit further, we can even solve it using mental math, saying, well, 41 plus 14 is going to equal 55, so h has to equal 14. All right, so again, we got another one. We're going to work on this on our own. While hiking, you descend. Descend means to go down. Uh, so you go down 2,000 feet from the start of a trail to an elevation of 5,200 feet. Write and solve an equation to find the elevation at the start of the trail. And it says down here on our notes, and I want to make sure that we point this out. I'm going to move it down a little bit. The goal is not just to find the answer here. We're learning how to model a situation with an equation. Uh, remember we've talked before about how we need to start with the easy ones in order to get onto the hard ones. So we know that while we're hiking, we go down 2,000 feet. So wherever we start from, when we go down 2,000 feet, we are now at an elevation of 5,200 feet. So you descend, you go down 2,000 feet from the start of a trail to an elevation of 5,200 feet, right, and solve the equation. So what number minus 2,000 is going to equal 5,200? I hope that you are all able to figure out that we must have started at 7,200 in order to get down to 5,200 after climbing 2,000. Alright, so again we got a little bit more practice here. The sum of a number and negative 9 equals 24. The product of 3 and a number is twice 23. 2 plus a third of a number is equal to a negative 8. A number times a negative 5 is 10. The sum of a negative 4 times a number and 3 is 27. And 13 is equal to 5 minus a number. I want you to pause it and I want you to attempt to do these on your own. And in a second, I want you to unpause it and check your answer. So here we have the sum of a number and negative 9 equals 24. The sum means addition. So we've got the sum of a number. So we've got a number plus a negative 9 equals 24. Equals 24, it tells us. So nine, n plus a negative 9 equals 24. The product, that's multiplying, the answer to multiplication, of 3 and a number is twice 23. The product of 3 and a number, so 3n is equal to 2 times 23. Twice 23 is 2 times 23. The product of 3 and a number is 2 times 23. So 3n is equal to 2 times 23. 2 plus 1 third of a number is equal to a negative 8. Again, equal to a negative 8. I know that's my end result. 2 plus 1 third of a number. 2 plus one third n equals a negative eight. A number times a negative five is ten, so is ten is my answer. A number times a negative five, so that means a negative five n is equal to ten. The sum, that's adding, of a negative four times a number and three 
is 27. So again, this one's a little more difficult, but I know that is 27 means equals 27. The sum, so I'm going to be adding, of a negative 4 times a number and 3. So I'm going to have a negative 4 times a number plus 3 equals 27. And 13 is equal to 5 minus a number. Uh, 13 is equal to 5 minus a number. So we have 13 is equal to 5 minus that unknown number. I hope you were able to get those. I hope as more practice goes on, they're becoming a little easier for you. Um, so here we have our last page. A hot air balloon travels downward as shown at right. Write an equation to represent the situations and then use mental math to find the balloon's original altitude. That's our first one. And then we have the balloon takes five minutes to reach the ground from its original altitude. To find out how many feet per minute the balloon travels, write an equation using mental math to solve it. I'm going to let you attempt these on your own. We're going to check them tomorrow in class. And I hope you have a great night. We'll see you tomorrow.